everybody, what is up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are a husband and wife, and together we are Teradice Games. And today we've got a sneak peek of a brand new game coming to Kickstarter that is Hungry Life by Sharky Games. So in this game, you will discover the animal kingdom all around you and their favorite foods. This game goes live on April 3rd on Kickstarter, so we'll leave some links to that below. Now, today we're doing something a little different. We're going to be doing a preview of the game along with a how to play, hopefully giving you a better idea of what this game is all about. Now, before we get started, I just want to say we are playing with a prototype, so any components or rules might slightly change in your final copy. Now, with all that being said, let's soar our way into Hungry Life. Hungry Life is a card game where you're playing and learning about the natural world around you. You'll begin each habitat with a different primary producer or human project, opening up new opportunities for wildlife in your hand and out into the world to start working their way up the food chain. Each turn you'll play one card, a base card, a human project like this conservation park or primary producers, or a card to an existing location such as an animal up the food chain, a natural event, or another human project. The natural events and human project cards depict how they can positively or negatively affect our natural world. The first player to run out of all their cards wins the game. That's right, and this game is targeted for the whole family or also for a classroom. And there's two different versions of it. We've got Hungry Life Europe as well as Hungry Life North America. The version you're seeing today is Hungry Life Europe, which features the animals and diverse wildlife of that continent. This game contains 125 different cards, and those can be habitats or different animals and wildlife depicted throughout them. And each of the animal cards actually show you different information about the animals. We have the name of the animal, its name in Latin. In addition to that, we also find out its size, its weight, its, and its population, and its lifespan. And then also we find out its conservation status, so you can see if this animal, like this animal for example, is on the endangered species list. So all that information is included in each of these animal cards. Alrighty, now the core mechanic of this game focuses around an animal's diet and their trophic level in the ecosystem. So whether you're a primary producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, or apex predator, determines which animals you can eat, and the highest card in the habitat has to be at or below the trophic level of the next card you place. Alrighty, now let's talk this through. So at the beginning of the game, we start by dealing out cards. Now each player gets a certain number of cards depending on the number of players. For two, that's 25 cards. For three, that's 20 cards. For four, that's 15 cards. And for five players, that is 12 cards. So once you get your 25 or however many cards, we'll take those cards and you start by taking the first five cards off of your deck and drawing those into your hand. Now the rest of your cards, you put those off to the side and you'll be drawing from those throughout the game. Any cards that were not dealt to a player are set aside because they won't be used this round. Now beginning with the first player, they'll have to play a base card that's either a human project or a primary producer, such as a plant or an algae or something like that. Or an almond. Now once that first player has gone, they'll draw a card to replace the card that they just played. And beginning with the second player, you've now got a choice to either play another base card or to play a card on top of an existing card, such as this animal here. I'm gonna play this animal on top of these almonds, and I can do that because the card's diet includes the animal that it's trying to eat, or the plant it's trying to eat in this case, and it also has an equal or higher trophic level in the eating order. So that means I can place this card on top of that card and I can draw back up and then it's your turn. So for example, are you saying I can play like this wood mouse because Yes, because you do eat like the fire bug. It's got the same symbol there. Okay, so. and then this mm -hmm. is, has a higher level, right? So yes. So that can eat that. Oh, sorry, bug. Now, turns will continue like this for a while while you're trying to get through your deck. But you may begin to notice that it gets harder and harder to find space for those little guys on the board. So, another and important concept about this game is that before you play your card, you can move an animal from any habitat to any adjoining habitat. So that's next to it or diagonally from it. So here we see this brown bear, he's a big guy and he's taking up all this space. But I can have this brown bear move over and eat that mouse. Now that I've freed up that beetle space, I can go ahead and play this sparrowhawk. And you can do this once each turn before you play a card. Another interesting fact is that the bird cards can move anywhere on the board. So you could move a bird from this space down to this space. 
Occasionally, you'll play natural event cards. Uh, with those cards, you read the text on the card and you resolve it and discard the card afterwards. So usually this involves moving some cards or removing some cards from the game or giving cards to other players. For example, playing Heavy Wins. Woo! Swap up to five, swap up to five cards with a random player. So oh, I, I guess, guess that's you. That's so. you. So. Oop. Yep, oop. Thank you. All right. <laughs> no peeking. Now, some human projects, in addition to doing things like discarding cards and giving cards, like we saw before with the natural events, actually become permanent locations on the board. So here I have a conservation park, which it's used as a base card. And then once it's set, I can play up to two animals on top of this for free in eating order. So this is a great way to get rid of a couple cards at once. So I play this conservation park. And then I'm going to play this stock dove. And then I am going to play this red fox. In addition, there are other cards that can play that cause complete chaos. It's one of those human <laughs> projects. Oh no. Then I'm gonna play farmland on top of Mr. Red Fox and all his buddies right there. Which this card, this is going to remove all of those cards underneath there. And I get to give them to another player. So um, it's just you here. So there oh, you go. Oh, just for me. Yeah, and some of these human projects are really cool actually. So they stay on the board for the whole game. And as you see, this wildlife crossing here allows you when you move those animals at the beginning of your turn, you can actually move them through the wildlife crossing to any connected area. So I can take this wild boar all the way through that wildlife crossing mm. over to that space. And gameplay continues on like that until a player has run out of cards. When that player runs out of cards, they win the game. And that's how you play Hungry Life. If you have any questions about how to play this game, make sure to leave them down in the comments and we will do our best to answer those. That's right. And the Kickstarter goes live on April 3rd, so check it out. There's a link in our description. If that sounds interesting to you, it'll be right there for you to find. All right, everyone, and that was our preview slash how to play of Hungry Life. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help. We do things on all things board games. Next week, we're really excited to be reviewing Fun Fair by Good Games Publishing, so really looking forward to that. Thank you guys so much, and happy, happy playing. playing.